Welcome back to the Rust and Trust production. We'll be doing a reveal video of Revels 1 to 32 steel Supermarine Spitfire Mark IIA. So those who follow me on Facebook will have seen this one already. Um, well, some cockpit photos, and you'll see the final result as well. So you can go follow me on Facebook, which is Rust and Customs. Um, this is quite a good kit, to be honest. Um, you've got it's about twenty two, twenty three pounds, and you get quite a lot of detail, and it's quite a big model for that. Uh, some of the details include you get a molded control panel. You get a detail for this, but I didn't add it. Uh, it's just in there. You can't see it because the light, but Trust me, it is in there. Unfortunately, you don't get seat belts or a photo etch fret, but I don't think Revel have ever included photo etch with any of their kits. So it's not much of a surprise that, but I used um, this Profiline tape. It's like a fabric y tape for my seat belts, and that works really well. You just paint them, and I made the little square photo, photo etch buckles. Um, and then put a wee bit more on top of that to give the illusion that they're weaved in. Um, the surface details really nice. You get recessed pan lines which are deep enough that they'll hold a wash after several coats of paint but not too deep like the Airfix ones. Some of them, the newer kits are looking quite good but stuff like this and um, some of the obviously the matchbox ones that are like trenches. So these are quite nice to me. Yeah, it's all riveted. You don't have to rivet it at all. Um, unfortunately it's a bit inconsistent, as in these sort of, the um, wing tips, if I can just pick them all up here, which are separate parts, presuming so you can have a clipped wing version, they're, um, the riveting's a bit lighter on that, and here on the tail, I had to go in and just deepen every rivet because it was so vague, and it would have looked a bit odd if I hadn't. Um, yeah, so the surface detail is quite good. You don't get an engine at all, which is a bit of a shame, but it's only £22, so it's not really... I mean, maybe if it was like five or extra, I'd expect to get an engine, but that price is not really necessary. And again, on the cowlins, the um, riveting's faded a bit. You can have the canopy open, as I have done. And the clear parts themselves, they're quite good. Um, obviously, there's... They weren't. They were in their separate bags, so it's better than some of them when they're just rattling about. Uh, I'd masked it myself, just using. I'd ran out of Tamiya tape. I had a wee bit of Tamiya tape left, so I used it for the front um, bulletproof glass. But that's a separate part. You have to glue the bulletproof glass onto the um, sort of frontal part. Um, so it's a bit odd that it'd be better if they just molded it in, so you wouldn't have to deal with that. But I suppose. It is quite thick and it is actually hollow. It's like almost like double glazing. You've got two bits of clear plastic and a gap in the middle. Um, detail wise, I'll show you them just now. Um, there are typical Revel ones which are quite nice. I ignore the sort of spillage on here. Um, you've got the instrument panel which I didn't use because sometimes they didn't line up properly, so I just dry brushed it instead. Um, so yeah, they all went down really nice. Unfortunately here, the wash that I put in only stuck in some rivets, so I tried to remove most of it so it was more even, but there's still a few rivets that actually held it in place. Um, these ones, on all the decals are slightly out of register as well. It's like half a mil off this, um, if I can pick it up, it's just a massive model. Um, there is a slight sort of white band around there, but it's hardly noticeable. And the red dots, for some reason, I've noticed it's a couple of uh, detail sheets. Not necessarily from Revel, but they're separate to the um, actual roundel. I don't know why they did that, but anyway, it's how they did it. And uh, you get all the stencils and stuff. They're all quite nice. The fit of the kit, it's not bad. There was a wee seam line drawn down here. Um, but that was easy to clean up. Uh, fortunately, some rivet detail was lost at the top of the fuselage. Um, but the, I have to say, these wings here, very snug fit. They didn't need any filler at all. And just if I tip upside down, here, small amounts of filler were needed. Um, but the front lower sort of section here, um, that's a separate part. So 
it didn't need any filler. Now the kit itself, I was doing for a sort of battle beaten effect. So uh, it was all pretty shady, I just did the panel lines, I didn't do all the rivets because um, obviously it wouldn't be like that, just be the panel lines. They were all pre-shaded um, and then obviously I painted it and I did a bit of uh, post-shading in the centres of the panels just to give it a bit of an uneven texture. I did use um, the old blue tack worm method for the uh, camouflage which turned out really well. Um, and then for the first time I tried the hairspray technique along the, the drum bays and the walkway so you'll notice in the photos and uh, well, obviously on camera that it's all silvered up along there. That text technique's really good, but you couldn't really use it if you were doing rusting because um, it would, when you're doing the sort of streaking rust effect, it would pull this stuff away. So you can't detail on top of it either. You have to varnish over it, then you can detail over it. So I wouldn't recommend it if you don't use varnishes. I mean, you might be able to get away with it, but it's a bit risky. So that's, I mean, here there was no details at all in that sort of area, so we're fine there. Um, yeah, so I did give it a chalk wash, uh, which I mixed up myself, so it highlighted obviously all the rivets, and I said it didn't stick in some of the details. Uh, antenna wire, that is a pain, this is about the fifth take of the video, because this keeps on snapping. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Scottish National Model Show was it, just weekend uh, there, don't know when this will get uploaded, probably today or tomorrow, um, and I entered this, I was long along with the Airfix Dyna, which there might be a video coming for it soon, uh, into the Junior Aircraft. And um, it came out on top with um, Best in its category. There was only three in its category though, so it's a bit unfair I think, but two of the models were mine. Um, anyway, I got this um, nice trophy that says Scottish National Steel Model Show. 2017 winner class 48 um, and then yeah this was really good I think every category I entered, entered into draw best but some like the diorama there was only my one in it and then for military recoil which I entered the pink panther it was that and a tank so it draw it for that so I was quite happy with that and then at the end if I can just move these onto the floor. The um, Spitfire managed to win Junior Best in Show. Uh, I've not got my name engraved on it yet because it was just yesterday I got it. But um, that was uh, really good. I won the um, Best in Show and thank you for, to Gary Bottoms making models again. He was doing the judging, um, and I met him there. Go check out his channel, he does some amazing models. Um, yeah, so that was quite amazing. And then, not only that, I got, also got the Revel Saturn V, which is in my stash at the moment. I just tucked away, it's behind the camera, so I'm not going to pull that out. Um, but that was quite ironic, because I'm restoring... Oops. My dad's old Saturn V with him, so um, here's the this, is the, this is the Airfix one, I'm cleaning it up, getting rid of the seam lines and stuff, um, so yeah, quite a coincidence there, so it's the monogram one and apparently it's inaccurate in some places, so I think it's just the paint job and maybe some part of the lunar module, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, yeah, so this has been a Rust and Custom production. Hope you enjoyed the model. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again to Gary Bottoms for um, obviously judging and stuff. And nice to meet him there. Um, next video might be this. Look at the colour of the plastics. The LS Models Diner Trainer uh, time lapse video. Uh, or it might be the Airfix Diner. Uh, you never know. But anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, go visit my Facebook, Rust and Customs, uh, like, comment, um, so yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.